Tegan and if you're new here, welcome. Uh, today is going to be my Game of Thrones review. Uh, this, is, well, this is the first book of the Song of Ice and Fire series, Game of Thrones. The book series and the TV series has been out for so long now that I'm gonna assume, probably shouldn't assume, but I'm gonna assume that you, a lot of people already know the, like, the series outline, what it's based off of, so I'm not gonna really explain the plot. I'm just going to explain my non-spoiler thoughts and then move on to my spoiler thoughts. There'll be like a spoiler warning on the screen if you haven't read it and have like seen the TV series or if you just didn't, don't want spoilers. So, with the non-spoilers, I think the book was written well. Uh, it's been very easy to read and I, I never struggled to try and read some bits. My only, I guess, criticism of that is... God, I, I look weird today. Oh well. Uh, my only criticism to that is that some of the names are just really hard to pronounce unless you've seen the TV series so you already have the idea. I, I have watched the TV series up to season 7, N not for any particular standpoint that I refuse to watch season 8, I just, I just was working when season 8 came out and I haven't had a chance to watch it since. <laughs> Me and my dad are actually re-watching the series right now, we're uh, halfway through season 1 so uh, we're probably gonna get onto it on, and I'll eventually see season 8. But I am uh, reading the books at the moment. I finished book 2. Uh, I think I said I'm taking a break but before book 3. This is my book 1 review. I'll probably do a book 2 review as well. The cast of characters is very large. There are a lot of them and I think if you hadn't seen the TV series and weren't used to them I think it'd be quite overwhelming because you it, you are very thrown right into it. Um, where I'd seen the TV series, I was already familiar with the characters, so it was easy for me to be like, oh, this is that person, this is that person. But I think if you were just going straight into the book, that would be quite difficult to just keep track because there are so many. <laughs> there are so many characters. But it is a it is a massive kind of world, so I can I can understand it. But I mean, it, some people might not like that. So, part of the review, I guess. One thing I would definitely give uh, George R R Martin is that his backstory, what he thought out of these characters, how far he thought back, the history and everything. It's very well done. Um, I think I was watching an interview with him, and he said about how he basically did a. A family tree which I had done a small version of that for my book but like he did like a massive family tree like oh this person and this person and this person which is props to him like he just really thought about uh, the backstory to his uh, before even the story took place which I know people need to do but I just think he did it very well and it, it does kind of get implemented into the story here and there so yeah I, I think he did that very well in the book itself, there are a lot of subplots within the main plot. And I know that's, again, normal for a story, but I actually just, I really liked the fact that it just was, it's a lot more complicated the deeper you go down. And even at the end of the book, you're just like, shit, <laughs> there's so much, I mean, that's why it's a continual series, but there's just so much to think about and unpack. So it's been, it's been interesting discovering those stories uh again with the tv show i was already kind of privy pri 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 privy that's the word privy i was already privy to a lot of the inf uh, information for season one i know it kind of drifts off after season two of the tv show into the book so i'm looking to see looking forward to seeing the differences of those uh two and another thing oh hi bells sorry Bella decided to join me on the sofa. Um, a lot of things that I... A lot of things. Another thing I can really give uh, Martin is that he, with his series, definitely gave a lift, a facelift. He changed fantasy for the kind of... N now. For now. He's definitely... What he wrote and how, it, how big it became is kind of like Tolkien, even though I haven't read... Lord of the Rings, it's, it's on the list, it will be read, just not not right now. Um, but yeah, like, from what is, from the kind of, I don't know, <laughs> what am I trying to say? A lot has changed since Game of Thrones came out, since it's become popular, and I, I don't think it's necessarily bad, I think it's quite good. What's, 
it kind of give uh, fantasy a bit of a boost again, which is you know can't can't be bad. You know, everyone knows Game of Thrones, uh, whether it's from TV show or from the books. And you know, I don't. I think if you if you like epic fantasies and if you don't mind a bit of a bit of bloodshed, I guess. Just a little bit, just, just a little bit. <laughs> no, um, you know, I think it's it's always a good thing to try and see if see if you enjoy it. There are certain aspects of the book which I'm about to go into, but they are spoilers. Um, so I'll talk some about them about them in a minute. But there are definitely aspects of the book that I just didn't get on with. Certain parts that made me very uncomfortable to read, and yeah, I guess we'll move on to the spoilers aspect right now. So. I had issues with Daenerys' story arc in this book. Mostly because I didn't... I don't like the fact that there was such a focus on a 13-year-old getting raped repeatedly and eventually saying, like, for no change of action from her husband's part from Drogo... Did she ever... So now she's suddenly like, oh, I love him. Why? Why would you? I don't... <laughs> the fact that it goes, like, also just the rape scenes go on for pages and pages. And I'm just... It makes me uncomfortable. The fact that she's 13. Then she gets pregnant. And, and she loves him all of a sudden. And sad when he dies. And I just don't understand it. And I don't believe it. And I understand that... George R. R. Martin was like, I want it to be realistic to the time, like medi the time I mean it's fantasy, but fine, he wanted it to be kind of like medieval. That was normal back then. You know, the very young marrying the creepily old. The thing is with the TV series, they make uh, which is what kind of I, I watched the TV show and when I saw Daenerys character, let's put a picture here, I was thinking she's what, 18 maybe 19, maybe even 20. And Drogo's character looked about in his mid-twenties to maybe nearly 30, which is still kind of weird, but it's more acceptable. Not when she's 13. She she turns 14 in the book. Not when she's 13. It creeps me out. It made me uncomfortable. And the fact that the detail of what happened to her goes on for pages and pages and pages. Like, everybody know rape is bad. I don't need that much detail. But it's not my book. It's just something that made me very uncomfortable and a lot of the times when I had I had to try and skip through it. I mean, I, I read it, but I didn't focus on it, I guess. I just, it, it made me uncomfortable and I didn't like it. That was my major gripe with the book. Uh, moving on, Sansa, a little bitch. Uh, again, she's like 14, 13, or no, I think she's like 11. But God, they make her character so unlikable at the start of the book. Like, I just, I, as much as, you know, as the book goes on and Joffrey starts to be a dick, I just really couldn't get on. I'm, or am I talking about book two now? I don't know. Joffrey is a dick. Everyone knows that. Um, but I, let me think. Sansa's character was really hard to like. And when bad stuff starts to happen to her, makes it harder for me to be like oh poor you because i'm like well you were a bit of a dick back then towards your sister you were being an asshole towards your father poor ned um (laughs) you know i just they make her more likable in tv show but still sans was hard to like very much so aria on the other hand thought uh, what she's nine in the books and she is amazing like must say I have a bit of a spot, soft spot for tomboys, but my god, where she, I mean, she has her kiddish moments and I guess this is something that I find it hard to kind of forgive Sansa for is that Arya's eight or nine, eight or nine, I think she's nine. Arya's nine years old and, you know, when she has a kiddish out, outbursts, because her character is likeable, I'm like, uh, it's annoying, but you know, you're a kid, fair enough. Whereas Sansa is just so unlikable. <laughs> Um, I think, oh, I'm hoping that her, she gets major character developments. I mean, she has had character developments, and God, she's just... 
I feel like I'm gonna like her more throughout, but it was very difficult to like her in the first book. With Catelyn's story, I got really bored. Um, th not that boring things were happening to her, just reading those sections, I, I wasn't excited to read it. So, yeah, I just wasn't, I wasn't excited to read Catelyn's story. It's cool things were happening to her, maybe it's just me and, and with the way that was written, but yeah, Catelyn was just kind of meh. Cersei, on the other hand, what a bitch, but what a queen in the sense of that she is an asshole, she is twisted, but she is very in character. Uh, George R. R. Martin's really good at creating these morally great, morally wrong characters. And one thing that you can definitely give Cersei for is that she cares a lot about her family or her children. Not necessarily her husband. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, she really cares about her family. And I have to give her credit that she is a bad bitch. But I quite like her for it. I mean, her character's not good, but I like her character. That makes sense. Uh, moving on to the blokes, because I just realised I've done all the girls. Ned, bless him. Wonderfully horrible, honourable man. Wonderfully stupid. <laughs> like, it gets to a point, not everyone is as honourable as you, therefore don't expect everyone to be honourable. Ned, and massive spoiler, that's why he dies, because he just can't get... It gets to a point where he needs to just realise, ah, oh, people here, they're not like me. They're not like the Northerners. We we respect each other. These people will tread on you when you're dead. And now he's dead because of all that. And it is purely based on his stupidity, which is so frustrating. I'm running out of time for this video because of YouTube. Thanks, YouTube. Quick fire. Robert, good old king, but bit of a knob. He wasn't the worst character. You don't see him for a lot of it. So I can, I mean, he's not the worst. He's a, he's... He's a typical king. He gets frustrated when he doesn't get what he wants. And if someone questions him, he's like, ah, blah, blah. but he's not a bad person. He's just a bit of a knob. Rob, who's 15, 14, something like that in the books. Again, I'm used to seeing him at like 20-ish in, in the TV series, but he was all right. I mean, I liked his development throughout the book, how he kind of takes some responsibility. I think his story kicks up. I, I'm starting to now m mix book one and book two in my head, but I know that he, like his story really kicks off in book two, I believe, where after Ned's dead, he's like, ah, poor, poor dead Ned. Um, I think someone in the TV show makes that joke. Um, but yeah, he like then really steps up. Bran, on the other hand, Bran's character is interesting. What well, in, in the sense that with what happens to him, he becomes a bit brat, which, I mean, he's, again, he's, what, the same age as Arya, roughly? Around that? Or is he a bit younger than I think he's a bit younger than Arya. Anyway, he's quite young. And with what he deals with. Um, but then, with these dreams... Oh, it's again, it's that book too. God, I might need to cut this video short. John! <laughs> I, I have a soft spot for John. I know he's a bit of a, he's a, bit of a Mary Sue sometimes. Woe is me. I'm a bastard. My father was a... I lived in a wonderful castle and, and, you know, apart from my father's wife who hates me, my life was so hard. I mean, I get it. He's... But since joining the Night's Watch, he started to realise that, like, his life isn't that hard and he's made some friends, which is nice. Jamie for of Lannister. Jamie of Lannister and Tyrion of Lannister. Tyrion's character is very funny. I like his uh, attitude. Um, he's just quite likable, even though he's a bit of a, a, bit of a twat. <laughs> but that's like most most characters in there. And Jamie, I I guess I'm, I think too much about the actor who I find very funny. But you know, Jamie in the books is just okay. I don't dislike him. I don't like him. He's just that meh. Maybe later on as he comes, especially in book two, where he comes into a bit more. Yeah, we'll talk about him more then. But with that, I think that should be the end of uh, looking at the time of the recording. This should definitely be the end of the video. So I hope you like my little weird rambling of Game of Thrones. Uh, let me know uh, if there's any other weird ramblings of books that you want me to do in the comments below. Brilliant. Have a great day, guys. Uh, bye. <laughs>